Hello, my name is Dr. Greg Mancini. I'm Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. I'm also the Medical Director for the University of Bariatric Center. This is a, a brief uh, um, slideshow, basically uh, focusing on the health impact of obesity. So over the next 10 minutes, I'll share with you kind of the medical view of how uh, obesity is impacting our overall health. For more information, you can either see me at uh, utsurgery.com or University uh, Bariatrics, those two websites, or you can call 865-305-9355. Before we get started, we were talking about obesity. We need to know a little bit of uh, background, uh, a little definition. The first definition to know is uh, body mass index. And this is a, uh, a calculation uh, that is essentially a ratio between our height and our weight. And so as, uh, as we grow taller, um, we can be a heavier weight and have, still have a good ratio between our height and our weight. And so I think we can intuitively understand that Shaquille O'Neal can be uh, 7 feet tall and weigh 350 pounds and be a healthy weight. But uh, if you shrunk Shaquille O'Neal down to uh, 5 feet uh, tall and made him 350 pounds, that same weight is carried very differently. And that's what's important to understand about body mass index. Unfortunately, as adults, we typically aren't getting taller, so the main way that we can inf impact this number of body mass index is by reducing our weight. So the degrees of obesity, first we have normal weights, um, BMI is between 18 and a half and just under 25, and about a third of the U.S. population fits into this category. Another one-third of the population fits into the overweight category. Uh, this is a BMI between 25 and 30. Obesity begins with a BMI of 30, between 30 and 35. Class 2, or severe obesity, or surgical obesity, begins at a BMI of 35 and ends just before 40. Morbid obesity is a BMI of 40 or greater. And unfortunately, we've had to come up with a new diagnosis called super obesity with a BMI over 50. So about one-third of the population fits into this category of obesity. If you look at the trends, this is data that comes from the CDC, uh, looking at 2003, walking back to 1996 and 1991, there has been an expansion. Uh, we have gotten heavier as a, nature, uh, as a nation. Uh, every single state has seen uh, growth uh, in the obesity rates nearly to uh, between 20 and 30 percent, so the trend has not been good. If you look at the impact in here in Tennessee, where I practice, Nearly one-third of adult Tennesseans are obese, and we have ranked between two and fifth with regards to being the heaviest uh, states uh, in America. Uh, we spend a lot of our tax dollars, $1.8 billion on obesity-related health care. We're about sixth highest in, in expenditures in the U.S. We're number two for teenage obesity, and that's quite scary because we know three-fourths of our heavy children are going to become heavy adults. They don't outgrow this. So if you look at the impact of obesity uh, on an individual, uh, we see reduced quality of life, uh, premature death, uh, an increase in their comorbid diseases, uh, loss of work and disability, and individual health costs that are skyrocketing. If you look at these uh, comorbid diseases, uh, I'll talk a little bit about these. These can be thought of as metabolic diseases, mechanical diseases, degenerative, cancer, and psychological. If you, if you uh, look at the most common diseases that are directly related to weight, uh, we have to be talking about diabetes, typically the adult onset type, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, uh, gallstone disease, uh, sleep apnea. These are, uh, if you look at the trend lines for these diseases, they have uh, followed the same curve and the same slope uh, that uh, the obesity trend has. The amazing thing is, is that as we see obesity uh, resolve in an individual, we see the resolution of these comorbid diseases. Likewise, we see a sleep apnea, GERD, uh, pseudotumor cerebri as far as mechanical and anatomic problems that are created with obesity. Long term, if those diseases uh, become terminal, we see uh, early cardiovascular disease, early diabetes with loss of limb and loss of sight, uh, loss of kidney function being on dialysis. We're seeing uh, uh, liver cirrhosis related to fatty liver disease, which we didn't see 15 years ago. Studies are showing that uh, the number of patients needing transplants related to simply fatty liver disease is going to be uh, chasing that of those uh, of alcohol consumption. I think another thing that's important is that cancer is affected by obesity. 
Uh, we see increased breast cancer, ovarian, endometrial, and prostate cancer uh, directly related to, to weight. Uh, the wonderful thing is that uh, we can have risk reduction and normalization of risk uh, for many of these cancers when we can get people to a healthier weight. Likewise, there are lots of psychological disorders that go along with weight. We see increased anxiety and depression in, in individuals with obesity, binge eating disorders, uh, reactive bulimia. So we, no, we not only see uh, things affect the body physically, but we also see it mentally. So if you, that looks at the medical aspect. If you look at the social impact of obesity, we see that it's very difficult for folks to be able to do the routine and average things that uh, normal weight patients do, like going to the movies, uh, sitting on an airplane or a bus, fitting to a seat, having the seat belt actually fit, getting through a turnstile. We see uh, inability to play usual things with children. Uh, getting up and down off the ground is quite difficult. Hygiene becomes a difficult thing. Uh, and the ability to buy clothes. So there's lots of things that, uh, that obesity begins to affect, not just medically, but the way someone interacts in their world. And really, obesity is probably the last bastion of discrimination. Uh, there's a lot of jokes that are made about individuals' weight, and a lot of us don't have a, a lot of compunction about uh, uh, laughing at these jokes. So we see the social impact, we see the medical impact, and I think the most important thing to understand is, is that how obesity affects someone's lifespan. Uh, data has shown that an individual whose BMI of over 45, if you're a male, uh, has erased about 12 years of, of your life expectancy. Similarly for a female, it's about an eight year reduction. And so when people ask us, is surgery worth it? Is uh, surgery risky? I'll tell them surgery does have risk, uh, but the risk of doing nothing is much higher. And this uh, stur uh, surgery study that's uh, published looked at those two groups. You'll see here this graph on the right, the red bar, shows individuals that uh, were obese and did not have surgery. They tried to lose weight medically. And over a five-year period, 6% uh, or 6 out of 100 of those patients uh, had died related to obesity. The blue bar, which is much shorter, is those individuals who uh, decided to have surgery. And yes, some of them did die, uh, about less than one in 100. Uh, but you can see the difference in these bars. Which group would you want to be in? Uh, there is a risk reduction uh, with regards to losing your life. So that's significant. And so when we, we uh, describe it to folks is that uh, surgery is an opportunity to gain back some of those years, not only the number of those years, but really in the quality of those years. And that's important for folks. So that brings us to the conclusion of this uh, short talk looking at the health impacts of obesity. For more information, come see us at utsurgery.com or at UT Bariatrics. You obviously can call us at 865-305-9355. I'm Greg Mancini, University Surgeon at University Surgeons, uh, the Associate Professor of Surgery at University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Thanks much.